it, what is the likelihood, not only that Donald Trump, the current president, can be impeached, but that he would also be removed before January 20th? Well, the likelihood of impeachment, that is to say the House voting out this article of impeachment, is almost 100 percent at this point. I don't think there's anybody who thinks that that won't happen. It won't happen even in the next year, hour and a half or so, something like that, as they wind down the debate. They have about 10 minutes left, so does that speak. They have a vote after that. We'll take about an hour and 15 minutes. The prospect of a conviction in the Senate, which is what is required to remove him from office and ban him from running for federal office again, the likelihood of that is, I think, is quite low. Most people would estimate. They need 17 Republican senators to switch over and vote against him, and most people can't get to that number. David, talk about the ones that have switched over. In particular, Liz Cheney taking a stand, the number three House Republican. Animosity growing within her party for her for this stance. But what does she signify for how Republicans are sort of at war with themselves? Well, she signifies, first and foremost, a deep division within the Republican Party. Uh, there are some people in Washington who are saying there are actually two parties there now. One is Republican and one is Trump. And they are, to some extent, at war with one another. They don't agree with one another. And Liz Cheney, of course, the daughter of the former vice president, made a decided break. She also signifies a sort of sending a message to other Republicans that it's okay, that you don't need to be too afraid of Donald Trump anymore as he leaves office and you can say what you really think. So what are the true and largest implications here? Say President Trump is hypothetically impeached for a second time. What does this actually change considering inauguration is just a couple of days away? Well, I mean, it changes things for Donald Trump, uh, and, and it may well change things for the Republican Party. It was reported, at least, that Mitch McConnell, the majority leader, was, if anything, sort of open to the possibility of a conviction, not just impeachment, a conviction, because he said that will put him out, the, out of the party once and for all, and he's gone. But your question, though, more broadly is, what is the Biden administration going to be able to do or not do, and how is that going to be affected by whether there are impeachment proceedings going forward or not? The president-elect Biden comes in with a pandemic. We have to remember, we still have a COVID-19 pandemic that needs to be addressed, a lot of issues with our economy, and he has a, a full agenda he wants to pursue, and the question is, what's the best way to get that done? He's very concerned, I think, about this getting in the way of that. So uh, if a Senate trial does actually happen then, uh, do you expect that that would actually cause problems, not only in just him getting it done, but in creating, I guess, that message of unity that he seems to be pushing that a lot of people say uh, he wants to sort of... Uh wrap his arms around. You know, it's funny you say that, Romain, because if you listen to this debate, as I've been listening through the afternoon, that's basically the back and forth that's happening. You're having the, the Democrats all saying, we must do something that's outrageous. This was a, an attempt at insurrection that the president really fomented. And you have the Republicans saying, wait a second, you're the ones who are talking about getting together and being bipartisan, being united. We need to be reunited right now. And what you're doing is going to divide us more. So that is exactly the debate that really is going back and forth. Nobody, I haven't heard anybody defend what President Trump did. Meanwhile, House Majority Leader is closing for the Democrats at the moment, David. So we're almost at the end of this particular round of debates. But the debate within corporate America right now, yet more and more names, Cisco, the latest, Nike as well, coming out, not wanting to support particularly lawmakers who seem to have been trying to vote against what the election told us. But how do you think this has put so many corporate leaders in a bind? Well, certainly it's on their radar screen, and you see an awful lot of companies right now saying either we're going to review our process or we're going to suspend our contributions for political campaigns until we actually have an understanding of this. I talked to David Rubenstein, you know, our colleague who does peer-to-peer -peer earlier today about this very thing because he knows an awful lot of corporate America. And the question is, and I don't know that any of us know the answer yet, is this a temporary thing where they make a temporary adjustment or there, will there be a longer-term review of how close you want to get with any any administration, whether it's Republican or Democrat, no matter what it is, uh, there are certain risks to your brand when you really closely associate. And as we recall, going back to the beginning of the Trump administration, he really reached out to a lot of CEOs. Remember them all parading in every day to the White House, going to mm -hmm. sit on various panels and things? A lot of CEOs were really uh, quite close, apparently, at least on TV, to the president.